Today's Stories from Storage is centered around a 100-year-old passport. So these days we normally think of a passport as a little booklet that is issued by a government as a proof that someone is their citizen and that allows you to travel outside of the country. This one is a little bit different. First of all, it's not really a booklet. It's just two cardboard covers with some paper folded inside. However, if you start to unfold it like this, and then like this, and then like this, and then finally like this, you realize that this is actually one huge piece of paper. Imagine having to do this every time you went through passport control. In fact, it's actually kind of amazing that it has survived as well as it has. The printed text is in French, the universal language of international diplomacy, and it says that it was issued in 1920 by the Consulate of the Netherlands in Constantinople, now, of course, more generally known as Istanbul, Turkey. It was issued to a gentleman named Alexis Balabas for the purpose of traveling from Constantinople to Prague. So who was this Mr. Balabas? Why did he need to get a new passport in Constantinople? And why was he so keen on getting to Prague? It turns out that we actually know quite a bit about Alexis or Oleksi Balabas because his archives are here at the UHEC. He was born in 1890 in the Kuban region, north of the Caucasus Mountains, and he was a descendant of the Zaporizhian Cossacks, who made up the first mass migration out of Ukraine about a hundred years earlier in the 1790s. He was in the Russian Imperial Cavalry during World War I, and then during the revolution was active in the newly declared Kuban People's Republic. So, he clearly wasn't a Dutch citizen. So, why a Dutch passport? Well, in 1919, a group of Russian ultranationalists called the Chornosotensi, or Black Hundreds, took over the area that he was living in. And because he had been involved with the Kuban People's Republic, they arrested him and sent him into exile. In fact, we have the passport that was issued when he was sent into exile. This one is in the normal booklet form that we're used to, and after his photograph and some initial pages, we have a stamp with a handwritten text in Russian that says that it allows him to travel outside the country, quote-unquote, without the right of return to Russian territory. In other words, go away and don't come back. This is emphasized a second time by a second inscription in French. So there he was, an effectively stateless person in a foreign land. He presumably knew that there was a substantial population of Ukrainian exiles who had already settled in Prague, and that's where he decided to go. But to get there, he needed a travel document that would actually be recognized by the countries that he would be transiting through. Therefore, the Dutch consular passport. So, instead of a passport issued by his own country allowing him the freedom to travel, we have one passport issued by, ostensibly, his own country that is forcing him to leave, and another issued by a country that he has absolutely nothing to do with that is allowing him to travel from one place of exile to another. These two passports document the kinds of travails faced by refugees throughout history. The life story of Oleksii Balabas is extraordinarily interesting, and we look forward to telling you much more about him in the future.